Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today's video is all about one of my favorite lenses which is the Fujinon XF 70-300 RLM OIS WR. Easy for me to say when I read it off the front of the lens. As a big fan of zoom lenses and telephoto zoom lenses in particular, I was super excited when this lens was announced in January of 2021. In fact, I was so excited about this lens, I placed an order on the day it was announced uh, with Kenmore Camera. That was before I worked there. And uh, so I got in the, in the queue to get one when it came out and I picked it up on a launch day, which was a very, very fun day. And then I made a video a few days later so that it, uh, I could talk about how excited I was about this lens, and I still am. Uh, speaking of videos I've made about this lens previously, I have, there's a total of three. I'll leave uh, links down below. Uh, first one was that uh, first impressions video. Then I did a comparison with the XF 100 to 400 millimeter zoom lens. And then I I've done a video where I just use this lens for street photography, the 70 to 300. So that's a, a few other videos about this lens that I've made. So let me continue sharing some long-term thoughts about this lens here. So to begin with, let's talk about why I got this lens. Uh, there were a few reasons. One, the relatively smaller, <laughs> smaller size and weight, especially compared to the 100 to 400, or even compared to my previous longest lens, which was the 50 to 140. So here's the 50 to 140, 2.8. Here is the 70 to 300. As you can see, there is quite a bit of size and you can't feel it, but there's quite a bit of weight difference. The 50 to 140 is significantly heavier. So uh, there's that, plus the price of this lens is $800 US, which is quite a bit less than the uh, 1900 US for the 100 to 400, which I had considered for a long time, but uh, this one really hit quite a few sweet spots for my use cases. Before I get into the use cases, a couple more preliminary thoughts. First, in my opinion, there's mostly no bad lenses. There are a couple duds out there, we won't talk about them, but uh, mostly there's no bad lenses. Uh, related to that, point number two, is there's no perfect lenses either. Every lens has something about it that you either don't like, doesn't work well for you, or just is a fact of life. And the third thing I wanna let you know before I talk about lens more is that I'm not a pixel peeper and no photos of brick walls were used in creating and informing my opinion about this lens. So one of the reasons I really like this lens and I, I carry it with me all the time is because it's relatively small and light. So this is my everyday carry bag, the uh, Peak Design 2 Everyday Sling or Everyday Sling 2 10 liter. Uh, so it's pretty much always in that bag and it accompanies the, uh, the lens that's almost always on my camera, which is the 16 to 80. So in my opinion, the 16 to 80 plus the 70 to 300 is just a really great combination to cover so many uh, focal length ranges that you need and with really good image quality. So some of my typical use cases include with this lens um, when I need to reach out and can't get close. So for me, that's been in street photography, uh, some construction scenes, uh, in the garden when I can't get close to a flower, uh, in uh, wildlife situations where I can't get close to the wildlife. I also really enjoy using this lens kind of for abstract or minimal photography, getting closer to things, focusing on details, um, eliminating distractions, uh, that's something I really enjoy in my photography. So this lens really, really helps me do that with the, the range getting out to 300 millimeters. Most of the photos I make with this lens are at or really close to 300 millimeters. So I've learned to really enjoy that focal length. So for me, the only times I really don't bring the 70 to 300 with me is if I know I'm doing a portrait session. I mean, I could use it for a portrait lens, but I have other lenses I prefer to use for that. And the other time I don't bring this lens is if I'm doing night or photography that really is lower light. Uh, at f4 to 5.6, this lens doesn't let in a lot of light. Um, and I have other lenses again to address those use cases. 
Let's talk a little bit about how this lens is held up over the almost three years I've had it. Uh, it looks pretty much like it did when it came out of the box. Uh, it's still got a nice smooth and good resistance on the zoom. Build quality is amazing. It's worn nicely. Some of my other Fuji lenses over time, uh, there's been some oxidation on the, the rubber parts. This one is free of that. Also, I can report that the uh, aperture ring is just as smooth <laughs> and loose as the day it came out of the box. Fujifilm, we need to talk, please, please, please. Make your aperture rings consistent in resistance and smoothness, please. Uh, in my opinion, uh, kind of the, the really good ones that I like uh, are the 16 to 80 F4 is a good uh, example of that. Uh, the 33 millimeter F1.4 is a good example of that. And maybe the best example, the one I like the best, is the 50 to 140 2.8. This is just uh, kind of chef's kiss for solidness of the clicks and just about perfect resistance. So I've never bumped this lens aperture, but I bump the, the 70 to 300. If I just look at it, it seems to switch from one aperture to another. So. So that's my biggest complaint on this lens is the looseness of the aperture ring. Uh, it clicks nicely, but it's just so, so easy to bump from one aperture to another. So uh, let's talk a little bit about image quality because that's uh, one of the things you're probably really interested in. Uh, before I do that, just a quick reminder. Again, I'm not a pixel peeper. I don't photograph brick walls as I'm evaluating lenses. So uh, your opinion of image quality may vary, but to me, in the way I use this lens, in my experience, the image quality is, is stellar. I really, really like this lens. There's a, a couple of situations I'll talk about specifically where there's potential things you'll need to correct in software. So overall, I really like this lens. It's, it's sharp, it's got great color, it's got wonderful contrast, and the images just look really, really nice to me. So because this lens is relatively small and light and less expensive than lots of other lenses, uh, I'm sure there were some design compromises made in creating this specific lens. Uh, two of the things that I've noticed as far as uh, affecting image quality are there's a pretty significant vignetting at uh, 300 millimeters or the more telephoto lens range of things. Um, but in my experience, again, for my editing style, it doesn't bother me too much because I tend to add vignettes anyway. Uh, another factor I've noticed in image quality is in super high contrast areas where especially tree branches against a bright sky, uh, you'll get some purple fringing. But again, that's pretty easy in my experience to correct with software. Uh, Lightroom takes care of that pretty quickly. Uh, one of the things I really like to do with this lens uh, regarding image creating is to take advantage of its relatively close focus distance. So at 300 millimeters, this will focus about two feet, 23 or so inches from the front element of the lens. So that lets you get quite a bit of image magnification. And I've used that quite often in the garden uh, when I'm photographing bees or flowers where I can't physically get close and potentially use a macro lens, but I still want some magnification and reducing distraction. So this lens is great for that. I am, I'm the guy in the garden with a telephoto lens walking around like this all the time. So uh, I do get some looks, but uh, I've gotten used to it. Another aspect of this lens I really like is the optical image stabilization, which I found to be really, really good. When combined with the in-body image stabilization of the X-H2S that I use, uh, I find I can get, even at 300 millimeters, down to about 1 15th of a second handheld and get nice sharp images. So kudos to Fujifilm Engineering for making that optical magic happen. Uh, let's talk a little bit about autofocus. Uh, my experience of autofocus on this lens has been it's great. Uh, it's fast, it's accurate, it's sticky, it works really well. One case where I've noticed it doesn't work so well or struggles a little bit is when I have uh, fine vertical elements like tree branches, tree twigs in between myself and a subject, particularly it seems like a bird, uh, and it wants to focus on those foreground elements that are closer, and it's hard to get it to focus on the background. Having said that, I, I don't know that that's 
a particular issue with this lens or the Fujifilm autofocus in experimenting with some other longer telephoto lenses uh, at Kenmore Camera when I'm working, uh, I've noticed that's an issue on a lot of telephoto lenses uh, over three, 400 millimeters when there's uh, objects in between that are kind of small and fine between the subject and um, what you're trying to focus on. So it just might be the nature of the beast and there's some technique that you have to learn, some practice to figure out how to work around that uh, given just the physics of how autofocus systems work. Uh, a brief conversation a little bit about uh, using the 70 to 300 with uh, the Fujifilm teleconverters. I have the 2X teleconverter, which I purchased when I was, my longest lens was the 50 to 140. Uh, and it I really liked how the both the image quality and autofocus worked with this. In pairing it with the 70 to 300, so using the 2X teleconverter with the 70 to 300, I like it, but a couple of things I've noticed. Uh, one, uh, it's autofocus seems a little bit slower, a little less accurate. It seems to hunt a little bit more. Now the autofocus speed difference isn't huge. It's like one or two heartbeats, you know, maybe a half a second. So it's noticeable, but it's not huge, if that makes sense. Uh, another thing I notice with this lens using the 2X teleconverter is the optical image stabilization and combined with the in-body image stabilization in the X-H2S is it doesn't seem to be quite as effective in stabilizing the image. Uh, I had with the 2X, I know at 600 millimeters everything changes, but I had a lot less sharpness in my images handheld uh, I know I'm trying to do crazy shutter speeds of like 1 60th, 1 100th of a second, but I can do that at one at 300 millimeters. And my hope was I could do it at six, but again, it could be technique because uh, there's a life is a lot different at 600 millimeters than at 300 millimeters. So something I'm working on, uh, I'll continue to practice with it. Uh, I do have some images I'll show here that were created at 600 millimeters with the 2X teleconverter. Uh, and I'm really happy with these images. Uh, but just know, in again, in my use case, uh, I've had some technical struggles and some um, a little bit of image quality issues at times with the 2X teleconverter on this lens versus with the uh, 50 to 140. So your mileage may vary. I know, I know. The 150 to 600 is on my wish list. So um, I've gotten to use it a little bit at uh, Kenmore Camera and it's quite a lovely lens. Uh, those stabilized issues, uh, sharp photos at 1 100th, 1 60th of a second, I can do those with uh, the 150 to 600 where I couldn't do it with the uh, 2X on this. So now you know. So in summary about the XF 70 to 300 millimeter F4 to 5.6 R LM OIS, I really, really like this lens. Um, I would give this a five out of five donuts if it wasn't for that kind of loose aperture ring. Uh, I really, really enjoy this lens. I think it would be great for anybody looking for a zoom lens to get extra reach because and still have something that's relatively small relatively light and relatively inexpensive. It kind of clicks all those boxes. If only the aperture ring were just a little stiffer in its click. See what I did there? Anyway, uh, I think especially it pairs really, really well with the 16 to 80 or the 18 to 55. That would another be a, another good partner for this lens uh, if you're doing the zoom thing. So uh, I think uh, lots of folks like this lens. I know that for sure because it's pretty much been on back order since it was announced in 2021. Uh, I know at Kimmore Camera, shameless plug, we do have a, a couple copies right now. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave a link to our website down below to order that lens if you're interested. Because I also know when I checked before I recorded this video, it's back ordered at all the not Kenmore Camera uh, camera stores online. 
So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the 70 to 300, I'd be glad to answer them. I'll just leave a question in the comment below. Uh, if you have suggestions for other videos in the future that you might like to see, uh, I would love to hear that. Uh, this video was actually suggested, a long-term review of the 70 to 300 was suggested in a comment on a previous video. So thank you very, very much for that. So we've entered a very rainy season here in Seattle. I know, surprise. Uh, so I'm not sure what the next video will look like uh, as far as being a street photo video or another one from the office here. So until I see you in the next video, I hope you stay safe, stay well, and have fun creating photos. Bye for now.